Hey everyone, and welcome back to my first season. I hope you are enjoying the new year. My guest today and I have never worked together before, but we have about 55 mutual friends in our Club Med family. His first season was in Club Med St. Lucia during the winter of 1989 as a bar geo. He worked for Club Med from 89 to 1995 in villages such as Waltuco, Copper Mountain, Eleuthera, Playa Blanca, Turks and Caicos, and the Miami office as regional manager for the bar for the American Zone. Some fun facts about my guest. He met the future King of England in St. Lucia, who happened to be there for the island's 10th anniversary of independence. Also, he has owned Hemingway's, a restaurant right down the beach from Club Med Turks and Caicos for the last 25 years. Originally from Seattle, but now splits his time between Florida Turks and the Dominican Republic. Please help me welcome to my first season, Mr. Terry Drummy. Hey, Terry, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. Thank you very much, Greg. Oh, thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Happy to be here. All right. So I think you know the basic format of this show, correct? I've had a, I've on a, I've had on a few of your friends, right? That that is correct. And I've uh, already talked to them the last couple of days, trying to prep me. So okay, hope I'm ready. Yeah. So I understand you grew up in a suburb of Seattle called uh, Kirkland. So if you can take me back to a time before Club Med, to as to what you were doing, uh, you know, were you working, going to school, and how did you first hear about Club Med? I was working in a restaurant, putting my way through. Washington State University, and there was a gentleman named Anthony Parisi who used to come into the bar, and one day he said to me, you would be perfect for Club Med. I'm like, what is that? And so he explained everything to me. Next day, I went down, sent my resume to New York City, and a couple, about a month and a half later, they came to Seattle and interviewed me. They came to you? Yeah, they came to uh, downtown, uh, not just me, but there was a hotel down, and the chef de Villagier is the one that actually interviewed me. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, this Anthony Parisi, was he an ex-GO or current GO? He used time? to be. Oh, he is, but he used to uh, be a GM and he said it was great. And so when I got my first village, St. Lucia, he took a month off and came down there on vacation and stayed as an au pair. And then the next year I got Waltuco. He sent his resume in and asked for Waltuco and we became roommates. Okay. Was it common for uh, like a chief of village in 89 to do an interview? Because I assume Ye was still working as a chief of village, right? I didn't know who he was at the time. All I remember is he asked me, did I know the difference between a pina colada and a chichi? And I thought, this is the easiest interview. Okay, cool. I I nailed this one. Uh, And then later on, I did meet him. So they didn't make you do any like talent portion of that interview? There was just really, he quizzed you on some drinks and that was it? That was it. Okay. Did he ask if you spoke French or anything? We were in Seattle and I didn't speak French. So that didn't, but you know what? He probably did. I can't remember so long ago. Okay. Because I noticed they, your, your first season is St. Lucia, which, you know, I guess you had some French guests there, right? Oh yeah. And, yeah. uh, you know, working in the bar, all the maintenance and cuisine, they all spoke French. Did this Anthony, uh, while he was having fun as a GM, like when he told you about Club Med, did he tell you about the uh, the long hours and the seven days a week? Or did you find that out when you got there? Yeah, he told me, but uh, that that didn't scare me because I put my way through university. I worked when I was in college, so I was ready for that. Okay, great. And had you, and you'd never been to Club Med on vacation, right? Never. Okay. So if it wasn't for Anthony, you probably wouldn't have heard it. Maybe a bit later, you might have saw an ad, right? But uh, you, so you heard about- I would have never, never have gone. And in fact, I got married about six years ago and Anthony came to the wedding. And during one of my speeches, I did mention that, that my life was where it was and it specifically was because of Anthony. Okay. They send you to St. Lucia in 89 and your chief of village was Rod Frankel. Is that correct? Well, Christian Maia in the beginning. Okay. And then he left- think about six weeks before the end of the season. And I believe he went to Cancun, but I'm not sure. And Rod Frankel came in from the uh, New York office and he took over. What do you remember about like, uh, like arriving or, or, or getting ready? Like, was it, um, since you're from the, um, you're from the West coast, <laughs> it must've been a hell trip because even when we leave from Montreal, it's a it's quite, quite a long, long ordeal to get to St. Lucia. So do you remember your like itinerary? Do you remember how, how long it took you to get there? It was three flights. And I remember it was the first time I was moving away. And so this is honest truth. I had a thousand dollars in my shoe. Oh, really? dollars. 
in my pants and then a thousand dollars in my suitcase. Just wait, 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 hold up. Wrong. Wait, hold up. You you went to a club med with three thousand dollars? My first season. I didn't know, you know, okay. that you, didn't, no. you didn't need money or anything. Well, no, well, well, no, but that's interesting because most you know geos arrive with with nothing and then they leave with nothing, right? Because they wind up <laughs> spending it all on bar bar tickets and cigarettes. So, no, no, I think you're the first person on that arrived with money and that much money. Okay. <laughs> and the funny thing about that was Linda Taylor Ferguson. Now who we're still good friends. She worked in the bank, and when I was checking out, I forgot all about it. And uh, when I was you- leaving, she's like, "Wait, wait, you have money in the bank." Oh I'm my like, God. Are, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> That's how much fun I had. Okay. And, uh, yeah. She's like, remember you brought, and I'm like, oh gosh, I forgot. So oh, I actually my. went back home my first season with money. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Which puts you in a, in a different category. <laughs> Correct. So, so safe to say you never, you were never on the blacklist, right? <laughs> okay. Well, I was a bartender. That's right. <laughs> That's, that was the key. Now, uh, were you greeted by, like, did you arrive, was it like late at night when you arrived? Uh, or It was pitch dark and we landed in Beaufort yep. and there was one person at the airport waiting for me and they, luckily it's only like a two minute drive and uh, they said, here you go. And they walked me to my room. The village wasn't open yet. And so they said, the kitchen's already closed. You got to wait till, for breakfast tomorrow morning. And then okay. that's when it started. Yeah, and then you see the the village in a whole new light, correct? Oh, it was a little eerie because it was closed. So nobody was around. Everybody was just cleaning. I, I got to the bar and I went in the back and opened up like 10 cases of glasses and washed them. With that, that was my first said, job. Did someone tell you to do that or you just started oh, doing yeah, yeah. it? Okay. <laughs> All right. So Okay. So that did you do a full six months there? Yes. Okay. What, what do you remember from that? Like any, got any funny, interesting stories from your first season? Did you make any rookie mistakes? Anything? What do you got? Now, when I look back, you know, I was um, scared of the chef de village. I didn't want to do anything wrong. I was, you know, I just followed orders, tried to work as hard as I could. Um, we had a ton of fun. The people that we worked with were just amazing. And, and I'm still friends with a lot of them. We just like mm-hmm. uh, Lawrence Tillier, Mike Patterson, Kevin Batt, and what a great guy he was. Big Lee, Lee Siegel, and his wife, Lisa. God, we had fun. Kevin Batt was there doing what? Kevin Batt was land sports. Oh, wow. Okay. And he, to say he had energy, that guy never stopped. It was just unbelievable. And do you know, do you recall who the chief of sport was there? No, I did not. It was a a French guy that, uh, and for the life of me, I wouldn't be able to remember his name. I'm sorry. Okay, it wasn't it wasn't Hansel Moss. I I, I know Hansel no, did. Uh, I know Hansel very well, but okay, uh, okay, it was not. All right, okay. So I guess you had a pretty then I would say normal normal first season, right? Nothing. I was, you know I thought it was spectacular. The one good thing about working in the bar is we would do one week days and then one week nights. So when it was switching over, you kind of almost had a full day off that makes sense oh yeah 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 i, so I do be like i worked the day shift and then the next day i wouldn't have to work till the night so we would you'd go party or we would get up and we would go cruise around the island so we actually saw a lot of saint lucia for us working in the bar okay great now as a bar geo where do guests actually is it like in the movies where they tell you their problems and you uh you're kind of <laughs> like a therapist does this really happen you know what? It, you do hear a lot of people's stories, but when people are on vacation, they want to be happy. Or at least that's where we try to steer them. And so, you know, you definitely heard some people whining. There was one guy, the life name, gosh, I can't remember. And it was in St. Lucia. And he came a couple times and he'd be sipping tequila early in the morning, telling us his problems. Oh, really? And we would just say, come on, buddy, let, let, let's forget that. You're, you're not there. Let's go for it. So. Yeah, try let's, to turn them around. Let's switch to scotch. <laughs> no, yeah, just yeah. kidding. Okay, <laughs> yeah, tequila that early. Yikes! So, was it a singles or family resort back then? It was singles. Oh wow. Okay. Uh, when when I went, it was I family. Think the next year or a year later, they switched to family. Okay. And yeah. it was, if I remember correctly, one of the singles villages in Mexico got hit by a hurricane, so we were full 
almost every week. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I think so it, was, it was a lot of work. That village held about 600, if I recall. Um, Correct. Okay. Now, were there wild horses? Because there were some wild horses when I was there. So did you see any like running across that little golf course? or, or there, Oh, um, sure. Okay. And then the, the cows. Yeah. Yeah. But for me, it was when I heard there were wild horses, I couldn't wait to see them because I've never seen wild horses. So that was a big thing for me because and it wasn't until a few weeks that I finally saw them because, you know, I'm so used to seeing them in a pen, right? Or a stable or seeing the idea of wild horses was very like, you know, Western to me. So I, uh, I remember, uh, I remember that vividly seeing him. <laughs> oh, that's uh, great. Did you ever do a season there? Yeah. Like in 95, I was there. Okay. Did you go down yeah. to the end of the runway on the weekends when the uh, big planes no. were coming down? No. Oh, was that where you would ha- what hang on to the fence? And then <laughs> was, was, well, was it was one of those? Similar to that, but it wasn't near as, as uh, hard as that, but we would okay. go down there and get on top of the Econom truck with some beers. And uh-huh. the plane would come by and fly over you. And then when the engines got in front of you, it would just shake you. But it <laughs> felt like you're ET or something. It was it was really cool. <laughs> nope, never didn't know people were doing that. Okay. <laughs> now, do you do like a dream sheet at the end of this season? Like do you do you tell them where you want to go? Or did you have every intention of continuing? I believe you had they actually my chef de bar had gone earlier and called me. Cancun and said, you want to come there? And I, I was ready to meet different people. And it, a lot of the uh, geos that were in St. Lucia went there, including Kevin Bat. And so I went back home and relaxed a couple of weeks. And then they called me and said, how does Waltuco sound? Fantastic. So you go there the summer of 89? With Bob Fagan. As Bob the, Fagan, uh, chief. And was Waltuco also... Singles village then or was already family? Uh singles slash family. Really? Okay. It was it it held like fifteen hundred people and on the weekends it wasn't geared. Oh, I think they, they did have kids club during certain times. But again, I was in the bar, so I didn't focus on any of that. Okay. That was your first time in Mexico? I was in Tijuana a couple oh. years earlier. Okay. I won't ask you what you did there. Okay, we'll move on from that one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anywho, All right. so what's uh what was Watuco like? Uh, did you like it uh, more than St. Lucia or about the same? You know what? They were different, but I, I loved them both. I could speak a little Spanish back then. My Spanish is way better now. But the the the, the people were just so wonderful. The, the resort was massive and unbelievably pretty. And Anthony and I had the top room. And I think it was Montañas. I can't remember. But... Uh, Hold on. I, it was a long I'm, hike. It was a long hike from the nightclub where I was the night bartender. You said Anthony. Uh, did, did Anthony and Paris follow you again to Watuco? He, what's what's correct. going on here? Then he okay. became a windsurf instructor and he was my roommate. Oh, really? Okay. Wow. Yeah. And did you, so you, when you were working in that restaurant, did, he just walked in. You, you didn't, I mean, sorry, that bar, you didn't know him, right? No. Oh, this is pretty cool. Okay. But I, I worked there for three summers while I was going to university. So you okay. got to know him. Yeah, which is speaking of university, your degree is in commercial tourism business management, right? From Washington right. State. Yeah. So it kind of you're kind of destined then to go into hospitality and tourism, right? I mean, like what I, did you, you know what, what did you think like like after you got your degree? Like what were you thinking? Okay, I'll apply here, there. Did you have uh do you have a plan yet, or you just were there to get the degree? Uh just to get a degree and then I thought, okay, I'll get sales or do something. And then I kind of in the back of my head, my grandpa lived in Hawaii when we were young. I thought, you know, maybe I'll try there. I want to get go somewhere where it was sunny. Okay, sure. Because <laughs> uh, I guess where you're from, there's a lot of rain. Tons. Well, we're used to, yeah, in Seattle. All right. Uh, yes. now, now Bob Fagan, who's the chief there, is he from England? Where, where was he from? He's from California. He's American. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, cool. All he, right. he was amazing. You got along well with him? Yeah, you know, I was still, you know, I'm just a bartender. So I thought, but, you know, just how he ran the operation, I was very impressed. Okay. Now, for some reason, though, because you say you just spoke about Hawaii and you wanted to be in the sun, but for some strange reason, you decide, you know what? Screw the sun. I'm going to Copper Mountain, which is where you go after Watuco for some reason. But I guess because I see you became a chief of bar after only two seasons, right? Correct. So were you then fast tra- were you fast tracked because that seems pretty quick no well there I'm gonna go back to Waltuco for one second I um 
was there and somebody from the office sent me and gave me an envelope and I opened it up and it was all in French. So I ran into the boutique and I asked the girl to read it. And she says, oh my gosh, you're getting invited to the 45th anniversary in Opio. And this is my second season. I'm thinking, what the heck is going on? So that's when I kind of thought in my head, somebody's looking at me or somebody has a plan for me in Club Med. So that's when I started thinking it, this could be a long-term goal for me, or a job for me. Wait a minute. Hold up. Wouldn't it have been the 40th? Because I was when I was in Australia in 2000, that was the 50th. Nope, you're correct. Yeah, so the 40th. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we caught this one, folks. So I'm not going to get any letters or emails from you guys. We caught it. Okay, so <laughs> it was the 40th. All right. You're, the years are catching up to me. Now, someone would have had to nominate you for that, correct? So was that your chief, Bob Fagan, that did that? I have no idea. Oh, Don't really? Know. Okay. okay. <laughs> but this story doesn't have a happy ending. So back then, Americans had to have a visa to get to France. And... My passport got sent to the office in Mexico, I don't know, a month before. And I left the village, said goodbye to everybody and went to Mexico City and got to the office and realized that they didn't have the visa for me. Oh, no. So you never got there? I stayed in Mexico City for a day and a half, finally got the visa, flew up to New York City just in time to see the plane fly off. Oh, no. That, so oh, never so made it. What the heck did you do in New York City? I ordered a Domino's pizza for the first time <laughs> in months okay. and uh, sat in a hotel and uh, waited, waited to try to see if I was going to be able to leave. And you never got there, right? Never got there. So I went oh. bought a ticket and went back to Seattle. Okay. So before you go to Copper as chief of bar now, did someone, did Bob Fagan, or did you say, you know what, I want to be chief of bar? Like, how does that work? I never did. They, they just said uh, you were going me. to be. You're going to be. Okay. <laughs> but somebody must have saw something in you is what I'm trying to, I guess I'm getting at is that. Because... Correct. That's the the feel. Yeah. When I got that invitation to Opio, that was in the back of my head saying, you know what, maybe somebody's watching me. Maybe it was what Rod Frankel saw because he was in charge of human resources in New York. So. Well, other geos, like I said, your name has come up an awful lot on this podcast. So uh, another geo has always mentioned that same thing about you. So you, uh, I'm guessing your work ethic was uh, slightly above par because I know um, it doesn't it doesn't come that fast. Uh, I mean, I did work hard. Yeah, gave it my all. Yeah, yeah. So if the geos are noticing, then supposedly the chief of service or chief of village are noticing too. And uh, I guess because you were chief of bar, you decided. Well, it's at Copper. Uh, I'm gonna see snow. No way around it. And you go there. Did you uh, did you know how to ski before? Oh yes. Okay. All right. Did now were you spending it all? Uh, so were were there any like hurdles to overcome as a chief of bar? You know, it, you're learning the ropes, and you want to be cool to the geos, but you also, you know, you want to make sure because you're responsible for the budgets and things. You want to hold your own, but it it came kind of easy to me. Now in winter 1990, were they still using tickets or bar beads or what, what was the tickets. deal there? Tickets. Okay. Copper was tickets. And you you had to count all these at the end of the night? Is that the thing? Yeah, we we did it together. You, okay. you just ripped them so you can't reuse them or at least you try. You, got, you guys used to put them on a wooden thing with nails, right? Like at the bar yes. when people would come in. Okay. Yeah, please stop me if like if there's any story you want to tell me interesting or 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 so or somewhere some story you got hurt, please stop me and tell me, okay? Cuz uh, <laughs> well, that that copper, I did ski for about six weeks because we went on the backside and the photographer went up there and took pictures of us. So we went off this huge cliff and I still have the picture somewhere. I think it's in my office in Turks and I have a wonderful picture. But when I landed, I landed hard and went all the way down the bottom and uh, had to do therapy for a good month on my back. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> so uh, being in copper, not being able to ski, that was not fun. Okay. Speaking of not fun, uh, I think it was Lee who told me this story. Did you encounter a scorpion bowl at Copper Mountain? Because I had no idea what a scorpion bowl was. So did I guess while you're laid up, did you go through uh, through any of those? Or? <laughs> scorpion bowl? Yeah. He says it's a drink. Okay. Never mind. Oh. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I'd never heard that term before. Okay. But uh, but hold on a sec, Lee. You forgot an interesting story that I mentioned in your intro because, uh, you know, I, I watched The Crown. So I'm kind of curious, like when you met Prince, Prince Charles in St. Lucia, who was there for, you know, in the, the 10th anniversary of independence, were you near the club? I mean, how does this happen that? It was only a couple miles away. And okay. they, I thought it was weird because they were painting the trunks of the trees white. And that first caught my eye. And then some of the uh, workers said, hey, Prince Charles is supposed to show up with Lady Di. So a number of us said, hey, what the heck? Let's go to the airport and see. Here. And I'm, I'm going to guess yeah. because I, I was in love with her too, that you weren't really going for Prince Charles. You were going to try and catch a glimpse of uh, Princess Diana, correct? 100%. Okay. <laughs> Did you see her? So they got off the plane and it was only Prince Charles. So we we're like, well, we're here. Let's go down and see what's happening. And they, some people gave some speeches, but it was, everybody was extremely cordial. So it was easy for us just to walk up front and stand there. And then there was a rope. So when they started walking around to see all the different events that were going on, I would thought he would just walk right by me. And he turned around, stuck his hand out and says, I'm Charles. What's your name? Oh, really? Yeah. And they, where are you from? I'm from Seattle, Washington. So I was there once. I liked it. So what are you doing here? I said, I work at Club Med as a bartender. He goes, oh, I heard that's a great place. He said, come walk with me and, you know, let me know what you think. So we walked around for a couple minutes. He asked me some questions about the island and kind of there, there. And then he said, OK, great to meet you. Wow. So you shook the future king of England's hand. Yes. And two. Wow points is everybody knows I'm not a tall guy. I was shocked at how short he was, number one. And number two, he was wearing a uh, a light green suit that, uh, I don't know, I, I thought he could have picked a better color. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> trying to be polite. Yeah. You told me to be polite. I was trying to be polite. But yeah. <laughs> it, it, caught, it caught us all off guard saying that, that suit's a little... Did they ever? Did you ever figure out why they're painting the painting the palm trees white? Was this the thing when a royals come for a visit? I, get, like, I think that's just to make it look clean. Okay, got it. Okay, well that's a pretty cool story. Yeah. All right, let's get back to Copper. Your chief of village was Christian Albert. Correct. I get. Was he French or Swiss? French. Okay, French. Uh, yes. Very right. easy going. Just easy to deal with. A very very easy season all right so you do your season there now i see you go off to do a season with one of my favorite chief of villages of all time denny am salem oh, in eleuthera summer 1990 i assume chris chris wheel is there too with you chris wheels there okay. angie boucher oh Rina fest richard rabinoff a good buddy of ours that's passed away jim henry that's right jim henry yes a real good buddy of mine mike page traffic there was Tons of people. Chance Isaac was a bartender for me who was a GE in Copper Mountain. So that was cool to see for him. Mike Page was traffic? Yes. You know, I've seen his uh, photo and name, but that's the last job I thought he'd ever have in Club Med. I was picturing he was on the sports team or something. Okay, traffic. Ah, traffic. All right. He's a good buddy. He comes to uh, Turks and stays with us quite a bit. Yeah, I think I've seen or met him at the, you know, I did two reunions at Cancun in uh, 2008, 2010. I believe he was there. Okay, traffic. Wow, never would have guessed that. Okay. <laughs> so Luthra, which I hear is a beautiful, one of the most beautiful beaches of all time, correct? Pink beautiful. Sand That's beaches. a pink sand. Unbelievable. How'd you get along with Denis? Fantastic. He asked me to go to Punta Cana with him the next season, and I, it just killed me. But again, I wanted to see something different. And he was taking a lot of the same team. And I thought, do I want to do another family village? And I I loved them all. But uh, he was really, really nice. And in fact, we're friends on now social media, you get messages and things like that. And he wrote to me a really, really nice message about how hard I worked and um, how much he liked me. I got a lot of time for Denny. Yeah, I, I asked this of, um, I think it was Chris, because he's the only chief that I've ever worked with and met that was so like concerned and always working, like how to uh, get money like in the village. Like, you know, if the village wasn't wasn't full, he, he wouldn't just sit back and wait for charters to come in. He'd go locally. Uh, did you see any glimpse of that? Because I, I was with him in, in Martinique in 97. So I know you were there in 1990. 
could it be he, it could have been he developed this um over seven years so i was just curious if if you know oh, yes something. he was constantly and not harping on it but he was like you know god terry do you think we could set up a table in front of the restaurant you think he'd sell some drinks there um why don't you try this uh he he was very into the business side and that 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 made me happy because that was the side that I was looking at in Club Med as well. I guess uh, well, as your chief of bar, I guess you have to submit your tallies every month. And does someone, is there someone I guess at corporate that's look looking at how you're doing oh, yeah. in sales? Okay, sure. Do they like not you only know? your the guest satisfaction, but it's also your your profits and inventory. Okay, did you have a favorite drink to make? Yeah, not really. To be honest with nope. you. Okay. Did you ever serve up uh, hairy gorillas there? Uh, no. No. Okay. <laughs> no one ever you know, asked uh, that. Okay. Lee would have. He was more into making fancy drinks and let's try this, let's try that. Okay. I was more the consistent. You know, let's make it the same, everybody. Let's get it out there fast and make sure you charge people. Uh, did you drink beer? Lots of it. Was there a favorite like local beer? Because I, you know, so far you've worked in St. Lucia, Watuco, Copper Luther. So was do you recall? Is there a favorite like local beer you wish you could drink again? Like they don't make anymore, or you you have to go to? What was it called? Well, you can get Click. But now I'm getting older. I drink Coors Light. So oh, you can't. You can't. You can't get it here, my friend. Not in Canada. But yeah, I do. Miss oh, it. we we I, can get Click here in the states. Oh, unfair. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we just got Modelo, which is one of my favorite Mexican beers oh, it's of all great. time, like only like five years ago, but it took that long for Modelo to get up here. <laughs> oh boy. Modelo's in Florida. It's all over the place. Yeah. I like it. I like it in the bottle or the can, you know, I just lo love that beer. Okay. Shout out Modelo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Craft is even better. Yeah, that's right. That's what I hear. <laughs> yeah. So you said, you know, from Eleuthera, you, you know, sadly you did not want to go to Punta with the, uh, with Denis and you didn't want to do that family village, but boy, oh boy, did you do a singles village or what? Cause they throw you in Playa, Playa Blanca, winter 1991 with Lafice. Correct. Must've been a good season, huh? Oh man. It was just fantastic. That village is something special it's just the way it's built yes everybody and you can't go anywhere that's right so everybody stays there you meet all the gms every week it is really something it's, special it's the best position bar the bar is right in the center the bar is round like i remember happy hour playa when i was there it was just uh it was the the uh, uh you know event of the day they'd ring cowbells to get everyone from the pool and you know all the other wall, wall climbing area and everyone would go at five i've never ever seen that in any other village you know that i worked at 10 years where happy hour at five was the event of the day <laughs> oh yeah it, it was it was something special we had a great team big lee was with me bartending there Unique Henry, who is was a, the European bartender, and we became good friends. We live, he is the chef at the restaurant next to mine in Turks. So oh, really? and he married Rosa. So I see him every single day. Oh, that, is that is that true? Yeah. What's what's his place called next to you? Bay Bistro. He's the oh, chef. Okay. Oh wow. What are what are the odds? Jeez. Okay. Yeah. Well, he used to have a place in the Dominican Republic and we used to fly over there and hang out with him. And when the economy there went a little sour, it's like, hey, do you think you could get me a job over in Turks and Caicos? And my buddy that I was with says, I have the restaurant. We're looking for a chef. So it happened very quickly and it's been over 10 years now. Wow, that's amazing. Now, uh, Playa, I guess you, you guys you guys uh, partied hard, but you worked hard too, right? It's that type of village. Oh, yeah. Just fantastic. Love, loved every minute of it. You find there's anything cool or special about opening and closing a village, like from start to end? Well, I actually showed up there a little late and, and they took me off a couple weeks early. Oh, but really? um, I did, when I became a regional chief of bar, I, I did every closing, every opening. So, okay. There were a lot yeah. of work. You got any stories from Playa? Playa, let's see. I mean, I mean, appropriate. I know I'm, I know I'm hamstring and okay. I know I'm hamstring and you here, Terry, with my, with my rules, no. but the, um, I, my favorite one is around the corner. There was a uh, hotel, but it didn't seem like it was a hotel because there was only like maybe five or six people in there at a time. And I used to jog over there in the afternoons, put enough, enough pesos in my pocket to drink a couple beers and then 
jog back. Well, one time I was down there on the beach and I got in and I was cruising in and I hear this guy say, hey, do you speak English? And I turn around and it's Billy Joel, the singer. What? Billy Joel, the singer. And remember, this is 1990. Well, standing up right next to him is Christy Brinkley. Oh, no. So for me, that that's like Sports Illustrator right in front of me. So I can't well, believe this. Yeah. Went over there. Uh, she, she was a little distant, didn't want to talk much, but he was just nothing but cordial and wanted to know what I was doing there, what's going on. Oh, really? Like, so he didn't need assistance. He was just wanted to talk to you. Correct. He said, oh. hey, what are you doing here? They were the only ones on the beach. I'm telling you, this place is deserted. I so, find out he was doing a concert in Mexico City the next night. So I offered, I said, hey, come to Club Med. I'll call the chef de village. He'll let you in. And he was like, well, that sounds good. And Christy was like, no, 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 thank you. And so I left. And then when I went to the bar, they, they told me that uh, that was the beginning of his trying to sober up, so to speak. And they were having little squabbles. So, okay. So I guess, the beginning, yeah. I guess she was still pretty much an uptown girl then. Um, Correct. Which, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, wrote for her name. As the three, song but, says, yeah, yeah. <laughs> living in an uptown world. All right. Well, hey, at least you got to see her, right? I mean, <laughs> oh boy, that's pretty cool. Yeah, very. I, uh, that's the only thing I like about the movie Vacation, really, is her in that red Ferrari, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Yep. Exactly. So it's interesting. You you know you have your restaurant Hemingways in Turks. You only really go to Turks your sixth season which uh, before the Miami regional office is your last season, you get there in summer 91, your chief of villages, Rolf Falk. Is that correct? Correct. Where's yes. he, where's he from? Germany. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I ever worked with a German chief of village before. Uh, do you have a good sense of humor? Mm, I wouldn't say that. I'm, you know, he was, you follow the rules and he stays out of your way. Yeah, that's that's the joke I used to make about uh, Germ with German GMs, not behind their back with them that, yeah, they follow all the rules that they show up with the best equipment, you know, but um, I at one point I thought I wasn't funny anymore because they would never laugh at my jokes. So I guess uh, <laughs> even on vacation, they're very serious. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, since you were in Turquoise, you have a Jojo story. I will say in my restaurant, there's a bell on our deck mm -hmm. out there and it says ring if you see Jojo. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> And uh, Jojo is still alive, so they say. It's crazy. No, no, yeah, right. I keep I keep hearing a lot the, of cuts. The odd I sighting. saw uh, Jojo yes. a few years back, and a lot of cuts from the propellers. I'm assuming. Yeah, exactly. He's still curious. <laughs> Very so, curious. So, so you go from Playa to Turks. That's like going from the frying pan to the fryer. So, what what's what's that like? Oh, uh, it's like getting hit with a two by four. Yeah, yeah. Shot out of a cannon with no net, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you must have liked Different, her. The GMs were quite different and uh, demanding. New York charters? And, uh, sorry? New York charters? Correct. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, it's, I'm trying to describe this. It, it was uh, just completely different. Very, very busy. And, um, but I, I remember doing that season and saying, okay, you know, maybe it's time to go back to a family village for a little bit. And, uh, <laughs> for a rest. <laughs> the, um, but, you know, it was great. Um, Hansel Moss was there. Angie was there. Oh, really? Wow. So, Must um, have been some, uh, some team. Yep. Yeah, so it, it was a high and a low. I don't know how to describe it. But then when the chef de village came to me and said, I, I'm, my next season's in Brazil and I want you to go with me. I thought, oh my gosh, this this is unbelievable. And I couldn't believe it for about a week. And then he calls me back into the office and he says, uh, sorry, you, the corporate office has changed. You're not, you can't go with me. And I said, oh God, where are they sending me? He says, you're leaving in three days and you're going to the corporate office. <laughs> okay. So you didn't ask for this again. Okay. Somebody said, just, Whoa. somebody promoted you, right? right. Well, what Patrick and I, gosh, I can't remember his last name. Watley, I believe, was the regional chief of bar. And he was just a wonderful man. He had had a heart attack about six to eight months earlier and had passed away. So they didn't ask anybody. All I did, I remember, and I think this is when I was in Playa, 
and remember, we don't have computers or anything. I hand wrote a letter to the corporate office and just said, if there's anything I can do to help, let me know. So maybe that made a difference. Okay. I see. What may seem like a lot of fun because you, I mean, sure, it was probably a dream come true. You got to fly to a different club med every week, check on the bars, but uh, there was probably, like, as you say, more work than it sounds like, right? Because you a were- ton of uh, work. Opening, closings, hurricanes. All the openings, messes, the hurricanes. You know what, riots. now, when they have a hurricane coming to Florida, coming to Turks, I say, see you later. I'm one of the <laughs> first ones that gets on a plane. I've just seen too much of the yes, bad stuff. Exactly. And yeah. it's not just when it hits, it's after the fact. Yes. No, food, no power, the mosquitoes can pick you up and take you away. And the cleanup, if you're one of those uh, geo teams Correct. that has clean to clean up, up after the hurricane. Crime. Yeah. It's just ongoing. So I'm too old these days. I, I fly <laughs> out. And I, if one's coming towards Florida, I fly my family out and say, you know, we'll pick up the pieces when we come back. Yeah. Hey, yeah I, I totally understand that. I went through five or six and yeah, I'm forever changed now. <laughs> yeah. Especially when I hear geos, I get jealous. Oh, they flew us out. We didn't have to do anything. I'm like, what? <laughs> I never got to fly anywhere else. <laughs> exactly. So your boss is at, uh, I guess, Miami, where Jean-Pierre Camembert and Hans Vertel. Is that correct? That is correct. And I also worked with Robert Tillier mm -hmm. and Nico Sturgio, uh, yeah. Jeff Bienens, who did was in charge of all the sports. Uh, yeah, Jeff Bienens, yeah. Uh, and Nikos, just, Nikos, I remember he was like in charge of the restaurants. Was that right? That is correct. Yeah, I remember him a lot. Yeah. Now, Jean Pierre and Nikos both are not with us anymore, but um, we just peace. had a wonderful team. Are you saying that there was, you said Robert Tillier, are you saying there was a head regional pastry guy? Is that what you're saying? Bakery and pastry. You're kidding. Okay. I didn't know no. that. Okay. Those chocolate croissants. And yeah, the white chocolate bread would be him, right? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> okay. He was extremely talented and extremely hardworking. And was his uh, was uh, Hans's wife Sonia? Did she work for Club Med too? Yep, she worked in the office, and uh, we're still good friends today. They have a couple restaurants in Miami, and they uh, she was uh, almost like our mother a little bit. We would come from a village, get to the Miami office, sit down. Okay, here's your ticket. You're going here next, and then you're going here. This um, here's some paperwork that somebody's asking for. She was our organizer. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now, uh, we've mentioned a lot of names, but I don't want to leave anyone out. If Is there anyone that you worked, uh, that you enjoyed working with, like that you'd like to mention? Oh, I gosh. Like I said in the beginning, my little notes that you told me to do, if I missed anyone, I... Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you'll, you'll apologize now, right? Because yeah. I really loved everybody. But um, I hope uh, Lydia Leon and... Uh, Ann Vandelano, she was there in the offices as well. Uh, they did the boutiques. Nancy O'Connell, she worked in the office. She was doing the human resources for the bartenders. Gosh, too, too, too many people to try to remember. So I apologize if I did miss anybody because I really loved everybody. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's but what's good. nice for me, to be honest with you, because I'm in Turks, I see a ton of XGOs. That come through the village and then they'll hear, hey, an XGO has a restaurant down the beach. So they show up and say, hey, hey, oh, gosh, I remember you. Or I did this season and that season and they told me to come in and say hi. So uh, I'm, I'm very lucky that way. Well, let, let's get into that, if you don't mind. Do you mind talking about Hemingway's? Sure. So, so what are you doing? How do you figure you want to do that? How did you, how did this all come to be? When I left Club Med, I just thought I had not you know little bit tired and I wasn't going to go anywhere that my position I didn't see me stepping anywhere so when I left it the manager at that time was Ricardo Gonzalez in Miami or excuse me in Mexico City so I flew to him and told him and he looked at me and he said I'll give you six months off if you want your job give me a call and it's back but when I got on that plane going back to Seattle I said okay this chapter's done I got to go look at something else so I was trying to figure out what to do. I bought a condo in Seattle and lived there for about a year and the rain instantly started bugging me again. And so I was thinking, where should I go? And I loved Mexico, but I was there in 94 when the peso crashed in half. And uh, I took about five geos from Waltuco. We went into town and had dinner 
and I put it on my credit card. And I felt so sorry for the owner of the restaurant because I said, I'm getting half off. Yeah, this is crazy. I'm glad I don't own this place. So I wanted to go somewhere where I thought it was a little more stable. And uh, Turks, that beautiful beach, the uh, hadn't been really found yet. And I thought it was about ready to explode. And it was U.S. dollar. So I thought, what the heck, let's roll the dice. And uh, there was a um, old geo that I worked with, John Tossi, that had a restaurant. And he was going to try to open up another one. So I flew down, checked it out. At first I said no. And then about four months later, I called him back up and he said, let's do it. So I got down there. And unfortunately, the restaurant we were going to open when I got there, there was too many uh, other partners. I just didn't see it happening. So that's when I started to look around and see where I could find a place. And I met a gentleman named Stan Hartling that said he was going to build a resort and he didn't want to do the restaurant. So that's where it all started. How did you come up with the name Hemingway's? Well, it's interesting. My first real tropical destination was Key West. You have Sloppy Joe's where Ernest Hemingway's pictures on it. Yep. When I was a kid, I went skiing in Sun Valley and Ernest Hemingway used to live there. That's actually where he killed himself. So I wanted it to be an American name because in Turks, there was not too many Americans. And I think it's because we have to pay taxes on worldwide income. But uh, I wanted it to be an American name. That was kind of it. And I, I kept on thinking Hemingway's people and book he wrote, Old Man in the Sea, was right next door in Cuba. Deep sea fish, and we'll use that as our fish of the day. People want to get drunk here and have fun. So I did that. And my partner's Canadian. He, he Googled it the next day and he came back and he said, hey, hey, this, this Hemingway guy has kind of a dark side to him. And I said, nobody's going to think of that part. They're going to just think of him as the guy drinking the daiquiri and making fishing popular and running with the bulls popular and that, those kind of things. Yeah. The sun also rises. That's right. Correct. And I guess, do you have to look up if that name's taken? Like, I mean, well, uh, what, 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 uh, what, 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 what year, sorry, did you start this Terry around? This is 88. Okay. Or excuse geez. me, 98. Excuse 98. Me, 98. Okay. So you might have had some of the internet already there, right? So um, well, did you I have... went to our lawyer and oh, oh okay. For $1,500, mm -hmm. I got the rights to the name Hemingway's on the Beach. Okay. So, so you did, okay. So you did hire a lawyer and he did do all that checking for you. Oh, okay. I oh, got yes. It. All right. Yeah. Cause you don't want to name your restaurant and then get slapped with a, an, injun an injunction after. Okay. All right. Yeah. And, Everybody that knows me, I'm by the book. Yeah, well, and you've been there ever since, right? Been there ever since. It uh, When we first opened it up, I remember, because we weren't, there was nothing around us. And Turtle Cove is the area in Turks where the restaurants were kind of making their bucks. And everybody said I was stupid. Then I went from stupid to hardworking to lucky because we started to really put it into fourth gear and really do some uh, good business and it's been going great ever since. About like how far a car drive are you from the club med in terms like five minutes or less? Five minutes. Okay. You can walk. It's a, it's a 30 minute walk on the beach, 30, 35. Okay. Oh, nice. So uh, when you're facing the ocean to the left. Okay. You guys have a specialty there. I guess you do a lot of conch and. Um, oh, we do seafood? tons of conch. We, we, we serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So anything from, Eggs Benedict to steak and lobster. Oh, steak and lobster. Good yeah. Lord, that sounds good right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, music, <laughs> live music a few times a week. So we luckily, I'm in a resort. We're the only restaurant in the resort. So we get the hotel guests. And then we're real popular on island. So we get a lot of tourists that come from other hotels. And then the locals really like our breakfast on the weekends. What's the name of, of the resort? The Sands. The Sands, okay. Oh, cool. So if anyone is going to Turks and Caicos Club Med, please, please, please stop in and say hi to Terry. Tell him you enjoyed his episode. <laughs> there you go. And I'm going to do another little, my general manager is Carolyn Robinson, XGO. Mm -hmm. My day manager, local manager, Tracy Smith, used to be the annex hostess at the restaurant, at the at Club Med Turks. And my executive chef, Alex, he also one time years ago worked in the kitchen there. 
Oh, wow. So yeah, four, four, four of my staff used to work in Club Med. Well, yeah, that's what I always say to, uh, you know, I say to this to people in Montreal, you know, I work for a university. I say, you see Club Med on a resume, you hire that person because I don't think they really have an idea. Like if you've never gone or worked there, how hard a geo works. So, I mean, you know, that's probably what you're thinking, right? Oh, they worked here. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's great. Med for how long? Yeah. Okay. And all three of them are just amazing. All right. That's pretty cool, man. Now, if I asked you, I mean, this, I guess this question for you is a little because uh, bizarre, because you could probably go if you're on, you know, I don't know how often, like how many, how many days a week or a month would you say you're at, you're at your place? Like in Hemingway's like. I'm in, uh, I'm there about 40% of the time, 45. Okay. okay. And, and you, then... could pro you, you could probably go into the club med if you wanted to, whenever you wanted, right? The Turks. We've had a couple staff parties there. Okay. To be honest with you, when I'm there in Turks, because I do all do a lot of the work in the office, so I, I'm super busy that way. And then, you know, buddies want to go play golf, want to go out and drink a beer or this and that. So it, yeah. it's just Club Med used to be the only happening spot. It's not like that anymore. Well, this question probably applies to everyone but you, but I'm going to ask you anyway, because if I ask you what are the three things you miss the most about Club Med, this might be difficult because in a way, I don't know. I mean, yes, you left it, but but did you, you know, like, is there, I is didn't, there something? I didn't leave it. Yeah. Could there be something you missed? Because you seem to have it all figured out from where I'm sitting, <laughs> where I'm standing, right? To be honest with you, um, my life is exactly the same way as when I was in Club Med. Yeah, that's what I'm I, hustling here, hustling there, getting on a plane to go see my family. Our, our daughter had some bone issues. We found out we needed to get off island. So that's why we built a house in Florida and moved everybody up here. It's not my choice that I like to bop around like that, but you got to do what you got to do to make it work. That's right. I should I should ask you this question a bit back because I'm curious. I'm still uh, I still can't get out of my mind that you what you showed up to St. Lucia, your first season with $3,000. So, <laughs> and when you went to Watuco, like, or any subsequent season, were you still showing up with, with that much cash? Or? No, no, I learned. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because normally I would leave a village with, you know, two 2,000 in my right boot and 1,000 in my left, but uh, you're the first guy <laughs> I've met that showed up with that much money. And like I said, I've known many GOs that, you know, went to the gestion office into their season. Okay. Thank you very much. You owe us $800 because they spent everything right. And uh, wound up right. owing, owing money. So uh, that's, uh, that's, that's okay. That's pretty cool. You're the, definitely the only one that okay. showed up with money to their first season. <laughs> I've seen geos show up that they had to take a cab from the airport. They didn't have a dime on them and they're running around looking for someone to lend them money, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. I, I remember one guy, I'm not going to say his name arrived in Eleuthera. And his clothes were in a garbage bag. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's called that the red redneck luggage. Is that what they call that? I don't know. Okay. Oh no, that's that. No, that's that. That that's an igloo uh, with duct tape. Sorry, yes. I'm forgetting my Jeff Foxworthy. All right. <laughs> wow. All right. This is pretty cool, man. Now, uh, is there anything, Terry? Okay, it's a part of the show where I ask if I forgot to ask you something, <laughs> or something you'd like to say. Uh, Please take a um, moment. Because... I just say, you know what, Anthony Parisi, I can't thank him enough. I, I just, his wife's birthday was a couple of days ago. He's in Arizona. They're just great people. Bigly, all, all my friends that I've, I'm so lucky because I get to see a bunch of them because they want to come. I have a nice house in Turks and, you know, people ask me to stay there all the time. So I feel like I'm still connected in Club Med. I yeah, still cool. have a great life that I did when I was in Club Med. So I'm super, super lucky, super happy. So when people ask you to stay at your place, that kind of makes you the chief of village, right? Is that, yeah. Do you feel like that? Okay. No, I, I'm <laughs> just happy to see people. And, uh, you know, I worked real hard for a long time and I, I got, I bought this land a long time ago for nothing. I was so going to ask at the I, right place at the right time. I, I was going to ask you that if I may, because a uh, former geo and former and a f former guest on this show has a very interesting story. I don't know if you know Cheese Jensen. He was in Turks sure. in 80, 89 and he had the opportunity <laughs> to buy a beachfront or, you know, away from the beach. And he was canceled against buying the beachfront that land today sold for 1.6 million or something like that. So you. Yep, okay, I know. So I know his land. And actually, I, I looked at it. Oh really? Okay. I know exactly where he is. I I uh I mean he still took did the good one on the ocean. 
okay, yeah, yeah, he still did good on the PC bot, but the one that he was, because I think he was told, well, I don't know if I don't land in a country I don't live in, and da 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 da, which could have been good advice at the time. I don't know, but it's funny no, how because it's British law, so actually okay. that wasn't good advice. Oh, okay. It was not? Okay. No, but okay. he still did great. He still did good. Yeah. Don't worry, yes. guys. He's He still did yeah. good. Shout out, cheese. Okay. There you go. <laughs> One other question, because I noticed being a, a, a geo bar and chief of bar, did you manage to avoid doing a show your whole time in Clement? Could this be true? Oh, no. No, I did them uh, my first couple of years. Oh, really? Uh, okay. And I enjoyed it, but it, it wasn't, you know, when they we kind of talked, just you think Chef de Village is in your future? And I'm like, you know, I'm just, I don't want the microphone. I don't want that. So I did them and I, I did the best I could, but it's not like I stood in line to try to do it. Okay. That's right. Okay. So yeah. You basically had to volunteer, right? Like, I guess you were doing Correct. a lot of comedy numbers too. Not too much comedy. We did, you know, the lip syncs and just the shows, easy stuff. Okay. I did a circus. Take that back. With Stefan and Lisa and th those seasons, I, I did the uh, circus, help them out a little bit. And then uh, I did that in Eleuthera a little bit. Not not too much. Now, were you, I mean, you were doing, um, you were flying. The circus on. show. So, you know, dressing up like a clown or doing the bike act, things like that. Oh, okay. I can juggle. Where'd you learn how to juggle? Uh, my brother taught me when I was a kid. Okay. And were you doing a flare behind the bar before Club Ed? Could you do that too? Do what? I'm sorry. Like flair, like you know Tom Cruise and cocktail. The flair. Oh, those, uh, I, I thought that's it was what Tom they Cruise. Okay. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we covered a lot here, but I don't want to let you go because you've been so kind with your time. Unless uh, there's something else um, you wanted to say, uh, or did we get it all? I just hope everybody appreciates all the hard work that you do. It, oh it, no, this isn't a two minute deal. You're, you're super diligent. You're extremely organized. And uh, I can't thank you enough because everybody out there enjoys what you're doing. Well, they did say I was a Terry Drummy of the sports team, but now I understand why, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to offer you this just so you know. My house is available for you to, when you Turks whenever you want. Sweet. You know, I always wanted to go back there because I've my first season was there in 94. And I've always I told myself I'm going back there one day. But now, you know, now I have a place to visit Hemingway's. So I get there we go. Any of those, you know, GMs out there haven't gone yet. Don't just stay all the time in Club Med. Get out, explore, go to Hemingway's, grab some breakfast, lunch, or dinner. <laughs> Great. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was the one, the only Terry Drummy. You've heard his name come up a lot. He's here. He graced us with his presence. So I really want to thank you again, uh, Terry, for taking the time with us. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And we'll see you all next week, people, with another new installment of my first season. Say bye, Terry. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.